Welcome to At This Time, and I want to talk to you today about someone you probably have never really heard about, or maybe you've just heard his name, but you know nothing about him. He was born on October the 28th, um, 1466. His father, Gerard, and his mother, Margaretha, was very much in love. They were uh, in love, but they never married, uh, which brought tremendous stigma to this young son and his brother at the time. They never married because Gerard's parents wanted him to go into the priesthood. He didn't want to disappoint his parents, and so he would not marry Margaretha, but he loved her. And out of this love came two boys, one who happened to be named Erasmus, born October the 28th, 1466. Uh, both of his parents died when he was nine years of age, but they had planned and had set aside enough to get um, Erasmus and his brother an education. They went off to Deventer, uh, to a monastic school there in Deventer, where they received an incredibly good academic education, but where they suffered under the hands of these monastic school teachers, who for any slight infraction brought down tremendous wrath on these young students. So it was there that Erasmus, though he got a very good solid academic foundation, began to hate the way the Roman church treated people. He was a brilliant man. He became, literally became, uh, the smartest scholar in all of Northern Europe. He was known to everybody, became a very uh, astute uh, Luth, uh, Latin scholar, uh, and fell in love with Luther, by the way. Uh, he began to be moved by what Luther was teaching and by uh, all of the reforms that Luther was wanting to bring, although he could never bring himself to leave the Roman church. That was the unusual thing about Erasmus, how much he aided the Protestant Reformation, yet he could never bring himself to leave the Roman church. He went to England, and in England he fell in love with the preaching of yet another Protestant under Henry VIII, uh, the dean of St. Paul's, a man by the name of John Collette. And John Collette became good friends with Erasmus, encouraged him to learn Greek. And because Erasmus was carried away with the way John Collette preached, which was somewhat expositional, and he wanted to learn the New Testament, he was hungry to learn it, he left and for three, three and a half years he did nothing but study Greek. He became Hebrew scholar, Latin scholar, Greek scholar, never spoke English, uh, but he knew these other languages so well. Now, what Erasmus did that I want you to know is this, is that he began to pull together manuscripts, Greek manuscripts. Now, what the church used at that time, what the Roman church used at that time, was the Latin Vulgate. Uh, he wanted to pull together uh, the manuscripts, the Greek manuscripts that were scattered everywhere. Uh, somebody in Cologne may have the first uh, two chapters of First Peter. And so he would get that. Now this took him almost a decade to do. Somebody in Paris may have part of the book of Hebrews in Greek. Somebody over in uh, Brussels may have had uh, a piece of the Gospel of Matthew. But he spends years collecting all of this. And in 1516, he publishes the first Greek New Testament from all the manuscripts that he's pulled together. He was rushed to do it by his own admission. In uh, 1516, he publishes that. Uh, in 1519, he publishes a second edition, which becomes the Greek New Testament that Luther uses to translate the New Testament into German. He comes back and now he is going to translate it yet a third time. Erasmus does in 1522. That edition becomes the one that William Tyndale will use to translate the English text from the Greek. 1527 is the fourth edition. He goes back, he's improving, he's correcting, he's getting more manuscripts together. The fifth and the final one is when uh, he publishes the one in 15. 
35, 15, 36 months before he dies. Just a few months before he dies. So this Sunday, when you're in church and you're holding your copy of God's Word, remember a man born on October the 28th, 1466, who spent and gave his life to pull together manuscripts so that you and I will have a copy of the New Testament that is accurately translated from the Greek. There's so much more about translation that all the time in the world, I don't think I have the rest of my life I could go through it all. But let me tell you this, if there's any verse that is fitted for a man like Erasmus, it would be the verse that says this, study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needs not be ashamed at this time.